Hello guys. In this video, we will see how a neural network learns any specific task that we want it to learn. Okay. So let's take this as a simple neural network architecture for now. So the input layer has five neurons, hidden layer has three neurons, output layer has one neurons. Now let us say the task for this neural network is a binary classification task. Okay. So let's just write that it's a binary classification task. So its job is to predict either 0 or 1. This y hat is called prediction or also the predicted value. Okay. So now you know that the transition from input to hidden layer or layer 1 will be governed by weights w1 and bias b1. Likewise, the transition from hidden layer or layer 1 to the output layer is governed by weights w2 and bias b2. Right? This is clear. If it's not clear, please refer to my previous video where I have explained the forward propagation of a neural network wherein we pass the data, the input features from input layer till the end, that is output layer. Okay. And I have also explained all the computations involved during that forward pass. Okay. So coming to this discussion now. Let's say we are training this neural network to classify between two classes, either 0 or 1. Okay. So the output will be having the sigmoid activation function. So sigmoid will predict either this or that. Okay. So in this case, we know that sigmoid activation function looks something like this. The sigmoid function formula is given like this. Okay. So it's 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z. So in this case, z is equal to w2, w2 into a1 plus b2. Okay. So what is this? If you uh, compare it with the machine learning analogy of logistic regression, ML logistic regression. So we initially had the hypothesis of linear regression as theta transpose x and for logistic regression, we changed it to sigmoid of theta transpose x, which will be 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus theta transpose x. And we represented this theta transpose x as small z in that machine learning algorithm, right? So it will be 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z. So this z, this entire formula remains same. Just the representation of z, the small z will differ. It will be w of 2 into a of 1 plus b of 2. So these all things are explained in my earlier video where I have explained the forward propagation. Okay. So I'm not going to explain it again here. So these are the weights associated with layer 2. This is the activation of layer 1, the previous layer, plus B of 2 is the bias associated with hidden layer, uh, th this uh, output layer. Okay. So that's it. Now our final prediction will be after we have this Z, we will apply the sigma and this will be the final computation. Okay. Now we, now we know that it has predicted something. So we have done a forward pass and it has predicted something. But in order to check whether the prediction is correct or not, we will have something called as loss function. And that loss function is given by minus y i or if you consider only single training example, y minus y1 log of y hat 1 minus 1 minus y1 log of y hat 1. Okay. So this is the same loss function as we have seen during our machine learning logistic regression implementation. Okay. And this loss is for single training example. Now, we have to compute the loss for entire training set that we have. So, how many training examples we will have? We will have m training examples with n features each. Correct? So, in order to do that, we will iterate over all the things. We will sum it up and then we will take the average of it. So, what we can do? We will say it's 1 by m summation over 1 equal i equal to 1 to m then loss of y hat i comma y i. And if we expand this particular thing here, this is nothing but this particular thing, right, for each training example. So, this is how the final loss or the cost function looks like for logistic regression. So, this is same. There is no change in this. Just in case of machine learning, we used to represent cost function with j theta, right, because theta had that theta 0 which is with respect to bias added within the parameters, learnable parameters. But in this case, in case of neural networks, we are 
separating that by us and representing thetas with w. So that's why instead of j of theta, we will represent j of w comma b as our cost function. Okay. So this is what we have to minimize. So in order to minimize this, we need to apply gradient descent. It's the same thing. So in case of machine learning, we applied gradient descent, right? So what was the update? Theta 1 is equal to theta 1 minus alpha learning rate into d by d theta j of j theta. So this was the update for gradient descent updates, right? So like this, we will go till theta n. Theta n minus alpha into d by d theta j of j theta. So why this particular cost function, why not the mean squared error like we used in uh, linear regression? I also explained that because when doing the binary classification, the linear hypothesis will not give us the con con convex curve, right? In order to minimize, it's uh, suggested or it is advised to have a cost function which when plotted looks like a convex function. So it should look somewhat like this. So this will be parameters, learnable params, either theta or you can call it as w and this is j of theta or j of w comma b. So for now just ignore b for simplicity for the sake of understanding. Okay. So this is how we used to update in case of machine learnings. But in case of neural networks, what we have to do? We have to update our Ws at each layer. And we have to update our Bs at each layer. Right? So in this case, what will be the shape of W1? So any guesses? The shape of W1 will be 3 pi 5. Right? And pi s1, it will be just a single number. And what would be the shape of w2? So you can guess it, right? You can answer it. It will be 1 by 3. 1 by 3. And again, the shape of b2, it's just a single number again. Okay. So now we will have so many parameters to learn. So weight w of 1 is a matrix of shape 3 cross 5. So it will be having 15 parameters right and weight of 2 will be having 3 parameters right and we have 2 biases so in the end we will learn total weight 1 is having 15 params right 15 weights weight 2 will have 3 params to learn and we have bias associated with layer 1 and bias associated with layer 2. This is 1 and this is 1. So total 15 plus 3, 18 plus 2, 20 params we have to learn in case of this neural network architecture. Okay. And when I say learn, we have to calculate the derivatives with respect to d by d dw of dw1 of j w and b so this j w and b in this case it will be having w1 w2 b1 and b2 okay so this is how we will take the derivatives once we are done with the weight 1 we will do with b1 jwb okay and then d by d w2 of j w comma b and d by d w b2 of j w comma b so these are all the derivatives that we have to learn and then update the weights accordingly update the weight matrix accordingly okay so hope this introduction to learn how neural network learns is clear so in my next video 
I will talk something about back propagation, right? So that back propagation is necessary in order to update these weight matrices, matrices, okay? So W1, W2, B1, B2. So hope this is clear. If you are not clear in this, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, uh, if not, uh, stay tuned for my next video, okay? Where I'll be explaining back propagation and how we update the weights. So, if you guys have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe, guys. Uh, I'll be releasing many interesting and uh, quality content like this. Uh, see you in the next video. Happy learning. Bye-bye.